Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. Their specialization, written by Cobalt Sky. It is thought that the most advanced piece and tech that civilization makes is good representation of them. And for the three major races in the Galactic Confederation, that technology was a specialized version of an FTL drive. Starting with the sharp-minded Nivlins, who themselves were a cliff-dwelling species that by galactic standards are small, around 50% smaller than average, and thus much of their technology represents that. When the Nivlins reached prominence in the stars and developed an FTL drive, they optimized for size. Compared to the other two dominant species, it is almost a fourth the size without any loss of power. This allows ships equipped with their drive to be smaller or more likely repurposed to left over room for some things like cargo or luxury cabins. Then there are the Zarok, who have a home world with lots of space, but very little in the way of useful resources. There are many barren graven fields of little more than limestone and harsh mountains on their home. Thus, they needed to make every ounce of iron and other elements count. This almost zealot-like efficiency is proudly on display in their FTL, the Zarak Drive can travel the same distance as others, but with about two-thirds the fuel. That may not seem like much, but when you are talking millions of tons of metallic hydrogen to move a bulk cargo liner, that is an astronomical savings. And then my people, the Yelves, who have a whole world covered in large open grasslands and is also home to the massive avian predator due to this threat. We grew to be extremely fast sprinters, so that our ancestors could dart back to the burrows before getting snatched into the purple sky. So, when we took over that sky, our ancestors feared that we put our speed into our drives. Our drives are on average 10 to 15% faster than other models. This is awesome for smaller transports and passenger vessels, as well as valuable cargo as it limits the amount of time, but it might be intercepted. There are a handful of space-bound peoples, but many of them are not yet at the point of developing their own specialized FTL. And for the time, all are more than happy to use the models that the three major races are offering. Then, just 65 cycles back, our community met the humans. They were odd, but not too weird. When we discovered them, they had spread out through their home system and had a small foothold in the next star system over. As expected... They were still using skipper drives, which are simpler to discover, but far less useful and flexible to the point drives that are the standard for FTL. Both contact went extremely well, and besides, a bit of shock from the historians about the human past, when that was cleared up and with the hesitant go-ahead from the historians, they were invited to our little confederation. Things started to get interesting when we offered to sell them point drives for their ships, you see, most species before them that were offered the drives were overjoyed and more than happy to buy them. I mean, why would they not be? The difference between the two was like trying to run underwater compared to running on a low-gravity moon. But the humans were not so interested in the drives and instead wanted the information on how they were manufactured. We tried to explain that they needed to expand their industry far past where they were to even come close to what was required to make point drives. But they still insisted on one diplomat saying, Just sell them to us, and if we cannot do it, we'll have to come back to buy them from you, so I don't see why you have a problem with this. So we all agreed to sell the data on how to make point drives along with a handful of drives to retrofit in their current ships. We soon learned that humans are very good at mining and resource extraction, as our trade and soon became an impressive trading partner for such a new people. Along with the usual things that they were buying, they bought many point drives from us, and we all but forgot about we ever sold the basic instructions on how to make them. Then the truly unexpected happened. The human diplomat invited some of the other species to see the newest breakthrough. I was no engineer, but even I could see that it was abomination of a point drive. But it worked. It was almost one-third bigger than the standard drive, and as some engineers we brought pointed out, was 4% slower and 5% less fuel efficient than average. Despite all of this, the ambassador and the crew of the ship were beaming with pride, and we could not deny 
that it was impressive that a species with now just three solar systems had managed to reduce a functioning point drive. About a month later, we would learn that they had already specialized their drive. When the first reports started coming in from our traders working with humans, we did not take a single word as more than shock trader trying to get through the shock of a narrow escape. These reports were all pertaining to pirate attacks and how when the pirates targeted, then got a good hit on the human drives to disable them was a common practice for pirates. They were still able to jump away. No one on the council thought that this was true. But as we asked the ambassador, and he said, Yes, that's all true. Give me a couple of days and I can show you. True to his word, a couple of days later, a smoking trade ship docked with a station that served as a confederation meeting place. We then were invited on board this obviously damaged ship. The captain introduced themselves and explained that they just got away from a group of pirates and headed there as the ambassador's request. When we got to the engine room, I think one of the Zarek engineers who was accompanying me nearly passed out. To our left was what was obviously a hull breach patched with void foam. In front of us was one of the human-built FTL drives with a massive hole in the side. The captain introduced us to the head engineer who elaborated that they had got hit with a railgun and the slug was still in the FTL drive. True to her word, you could still see the glowing lump of slag and the projectile in the hull. The engineer also went on to tell us that they were submitting a complaint with the drive's manufacturer as they lost 40% efficiency after the strike, but the manufacturer said that they would lose only 30%. What kind of insanity is that their biggest problem is 10% less efficiency when they still had a smoking hole in the side of their FTL drive? End of story. Story number two. The safest mode of galactic travel. Written by Dinah Ma'ar. The MC walks from backstage. Applause. Welcome, welcome. Tonight I want to tell you about the latest, newest, and safest way to travel in the galaxy. Applause. Now, as you know, space is a very dangerous place. So vast and cold, standard ships could not generate enough heat to stay warm. Up to 30% of travelers would succumb to the freezing temperatures. That all changed when we found the humans. Applause. Because of energy required to leave a planet, all life that has been encountered in space has been small. The humans are huge. We will not discuss the crazy things that they do to get off their planet. Not. Because of their ship, their ships have to be huge. And as such, they have to have large engines that generate lots of heat. Since they took over the space travel in the galaxy, there have been no deaths from freezing, but space is still a dangerous place. Micrometeorites, spontaneous black holes, solar bursts, and cosmic strings, just to name a few. The MC takes a drink of liquid, allowing the last remark to sink in and increase the attention the audience will give his next words. But we now introduce you to the safest way to travel. Do not just travel in a human ship, but travel inside a human ship, in a human ship. That's right, you will be given your very own luxury pod full of amenities to keep you occupied on your voyage. Very spacious, 3 millimeters long by 1.5 millimeters wide. For just a little more, we can upgrade you to a larger size of 5 millimeters. That includes a servant to cook and clean for you. Applause. Your pot will be injected into a human just under the skin in a fatty layer of tissue. It will provide a constant environment to make your trip as comfortable as possible. Should there be an accident during your travels, being inside a human increases the likelihood of your survival by 1000%. Applause. As you know, humans are from a death world, and they are capable of surviving in the harshest of environments. Being inside a human gives you a level of safety that you cannot get from any machine. Their ability to generate heat, to cool down and survive in the conditions that would kill most intelligent life. Make them the ideal carrier. Applause. And if you want more added protection, just for a few more credits, you can be injected into a human called a Marine. 
They are trained to survive things other humans would succumb to and can guarantee your safe arrival. Applause. Now, make sure you ask for the subdermal human interstellar travel system when you book your next travel plans and have the safest trip in the galaxy. Applause. The viewer's screen changes to a company name along with an acronym for the newest, most popular way to travel. Galactic Alliance Shuttle Systems, the SHITS. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barkey, Mids Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian.